Michael, great to meet you. What's happening? How are you? Good, good. How many of these type of interviews have you done so far? Uh, I haven't done too many, actually. Just a couple of them for masters and stuff. So it's, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the new way, I guess you can say right now. <laughs> right, right. Uh, my, I started off with some questions for you about your magic is that um, I love the speed of your tricks. There's no time for resting. And uh, I think in today's age, that's the way to do it. And you do it so great. Yeah, you know, there's, uh, you know, tons of illusions that I do on stage. And I've always just tried to, you know, make them my own and design some new things and just make them, you know, fast paced. The audience is out there just to see some stuff happening. And that's the cool thing with Masters of Illusion, too. You know, there's so much different variety of magic on there. So you'll get to see uh, tons of different types of magic, which is cool. What are the challenges of being on Masters of Illusion with uh, 46 other magicians? Uh, how, how is well, it being on there? It's been a blast. You know, you get to meet so many people in the magic industry. Uh, a lot of them I've known before. And it's, you know, we get to talk magic, discuss magic and, and uh, the cool part is we get to see different, you know, different, different types of magic that everyone does. You know, in this show, there's grand illusion, there's close-up magic, escapes, comedy magic, you know, and you get to see all the different types, which is fun. So uh, we feed off each other and just, you know, we're out there just to perform and, and, and to uh, make the audience happy, you know. So they can right, play. right. It's really good. It's really fun to watch. It seems really expensive to make these tricks. <laughs> Well, you know, it's uh, sometimes, you know, we have some builders that build certain things that for us and stuff like that. And I've done some stuff myself over the years, but uh, it's, it's our craft. It's our, you know, it's our passion and, you know, whatever it takes to be able to perform it and, and entertain the audience. That's what we do. How does your casting go to hire your assistants? Like, do they have to be able to squeeze into small spots or? Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, I've been doing this for a long time and it always comes down to, you know, some of the some of the assistants that I've used uh, and dancers, you know, that are in the show and stuff like that, they, you know, they have been with me for over 10 years, you know, and they've been with me from day one and just performing all over the country, all over the world with me. And it's, we've become so tight of a team and, um, and we're, you know, best of friends, you know, my, my wife is best friends with all of the assistants that work with me. So it's, it's the best to, you know, be able to travel with them because we have such a, uh, friendly relationship and you know sometimes you have to fit in small boxes and stuff like that but that's the magic part of it so <laughs> right, right. not going to get into that too much but it's a it's a it's a family, you know uh, relationship that we all have together which is really nice let's talk about your career give me the three points in your career that that got you to where you are now like the the one the the moment you knew you wanted to do it the big break the the second bigger break and so forth how, how did this go well, it's been a passion of mine, magic, uh, and being on stage since I've been a little kid. You know, I grew up in New Jersey, and I spent a lot of summers in Atlantic City, which was a real casino town, and I saw tons of magic shows, whether it was, you know, magic shows, variety shows, or just any type of shows. You know, my mom would take me to see these different shows, and it was just, you know, a blast to be able to see these people up on stage performing. That was something I knew I wanted to do. And over the years, I said, you know what, magic is really, you know, that avenue for me, and I went to magic stores. Uh, met with the magicians and I met a lot of magicians um, that were that were performing at the time and at the time I met with them I would hang out after the show and talk with them and stuff like that so it was a blast to just you know talk to these guys and stay in contact with them and I would just see their shows over and over and over you know wow. and you know all summer long and stuff and that's kind of what got me hooked into the, the magic world and uh, it's a quick little story you know some of those guys I got to perform with on Masters of Illusion you know, so seeing them as a little kid and then being up on stage performing with them was just a dream come true, you know. So, uh, that, you know, ever since I've been a little kid, that was something that I knew I wanted to fulfill there. And um, as I got older, I started touring a show. And, you know, for me, at my big break, I wanted to I wanted to take my show to Atlantic City because I grew up there. I saw these guys up on billboards. I saw these guys in this, on, the, on the different theaters there. And that was it. You know, I was persistent and persistent year after year trying to get myself into Atlantic City. And, and I finally did. You know, I got in there and it was a blast. You know, I got to perform my show for several years, year after year, season after season. And it was just a dream come true, you know, to drive down those those common roads down that area and to see my face on these billboards and my family and friends to see that. You know, to me, that was a dream come true. And, and I knew something that was uh, was going to be the, for, the, for the rest of my career. How, uh, big, <clears throat> how big, I'm sorry to interrupt you. How big of a push was AMG then? America's Got Talent. Oh, AMG. 
Earl AMG. I'm, I'm thinking Mercedes. Sorry. <laughs> AGT, America's Got Talent. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a blast. You know, I was actually performing at the time in Atlantic City when I was on America's Got Talent, and that was, you know, for me, that was the next step to take my, you know, kind of local fame as a magician to take it to the national level and I did you know I got to be on that show which was amazing you gotta get so much uh you know you get so much so many different people that are watching that show so many different people that are following that show and it was a blast you know and I took that show as far as I could take it once I did that show I took the sh my personal show and went out to Las Vegas and performed at one of the casinos out there in Planet Hollywood so for that that was another big break that was just amazing because as a magician you always want to bring your magic to Las Vegas you know, that's like a dream come true. And, and that's what we did there. And it was about a year or so that we were in Planet Hollywood there, one of the casinos, and it was a blast. And that's kind of after that, that's kind of when I got hooked up with Masters of Illusion. And I moved out to the LA area, we did a bunch of TV shows, and I started touring with them. And since then, for the past, you know, six or six or years now, I've been touring with them and doing the TV shows. And it's just been a, a dream come true. What old school magicians do you look up to? Well, you know, the, the well-known guys, you know, David Copperfield, Lance Burton, you might hear of, even Harry Blackstone. Uh, these are all guys that are just very well-known. You'll probably, you know, like, of course, uh, David Copperfield, you'll recognize. And then besides those guys, you know, there's, there's guys in the magic industry that are just so well-known in, in my eyes that I've always looked up to, you know, over the years. And like I said, got to work with. And these are the guys that just helped me throughout my career. So a lot of those, a lot of those guys I really look up to too uh you're not you know might not always remember their names but you know those are the guys that i really look up to and like to follow and stay in touch clubs with and over the over the years i've become friendly with now so which is really something cool for me have they ever had magic in a uso tour yeah actually um there have been and i actually not thinking back to that it's been a while but when i was in performing in Las Vegas, we did a, a couple charity events for the USO uh, out in, in Nevada there. And we did, it was, it was not, I never toured with them, but I did a couple um, local ones for the, uh, for the base out there, actually, now I remember, but That's I never cool. on tour, but I know a couple other guys that have actually, a couple other magicians have been on the US, USO tours. What's the number one thing adults ask you? And what's the number one thing kids ask you? Adults always ask, can you make my wife disappear? You know, that's the one. <laughs> you make my wife, that's always a big one. You know, the guys, can you make my wife disappear? And then I, <laughs> okay. Uh, and kids, they're always just intrigued. You know, they're intrigued of the magic and how we got started into it and how, you know, they can become a magician. And that's something I always will sit and chat with kids about because for me, when I was a kid, I would always do that after shows, go talk to the magicians, say, hey, you know, how'd you get started in this? You know, and, you know, how can I be a part of it? And it's just, for me, it's always, I always tell them, you know, you have to believe in yourself, follow your dreams and just keep practicing. And, and, uh, and that's what it's really all about. I've heard that you do um, some tricks on red carpets. Yeah, we've done, we've done I've, tons of red carpets I've done. There's always magic that has to be involved, you know, when as a magician, no matter, you know, where you go, always going to, someone's always going to ask you, can you do a magic trick, you know? <laughs> right, right. Is, is, is that like a satisfying thing when you just see people's faces including mine i'm like wow that's, it is it's actually magic because there's no it way is. how did he do that it is and that's the coolest thing about being up on stage you know that's what i look out to the audience for you know i look out to the audience and just see the audience's faces because to see that reaction that they that i see from them for me that's that's the that's the end all result there to you know see their their smiling faces i watched some of your videos and uh, america's got talent not amg uh, <laughs> uh it, it's it was really blew, blew me away how just okay there's not another girl in there there's not another yeah, exactly. there's there's all, those, all those girls popping out of that box. <laughs> <laughs> you raised that trick. It was like, okay, there's, okay, three is the max. It can't go past three. And then there's a fourth one. And that was, crazy, so right? impressive. that was, uh, do people talk about I me? Mean, I'm talking about it. Do people talk about that particular trick a lot? Yeah, all the time, all the time. You know, that was an idea that we had, we came up with because we wanted to, I wanted to do a whole bunch of magic in a short amount of time. They gave you 90 seconds back then when I did it. And, uh, I just wanted to cram it all in. You know, we started rehearsing that. I think it was whew, maybe four minutes it took us to do all those illusions. And we just kind of scaled it down, scaled it down. You know, every time I turned, if you go back and watch it, there's something giving me, somebody's giving me something or I'm handing something off or the props right there. So we had to get that time that down perfectly. And, you know, it just took some rehearsal, but the end result was amazing. And it was, it was 
a blast performing that, you know, bang, 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 bang. And I've done it live, you know, year after year in different shows that I've toured with and stuff like that. And uh, it's been a blast. Okay, so you're a magician. There's got to be a lot of confidence in what you do, right? Yeah. And do you st start to think like you kind of have a little magic touch, like like throwing a ball in a basket or some little oh. like, you know, like <laughs> I can make this move in a certain way or kind of. I, I guess in the magic world, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, uh, I've always believed in magic and stuff. But uh, besides that, you know, there's, there's, I, I'm all about, you know, when I perform, there's, there's some storytelling involved and I like to, you know, tell my story to the audience. So that's kind of a, a little magic touch there to give them a little bit of, uh, you know, my story behind the, the art of magic as well. Right, right. Let's, I'm going to go it over to uh, Houdini. Are you, uh, I mean, almost every magician I've ever spoke to yeah. is Houdini fan. Actually, that's a Houdini clock behind Oh, me. I didn't know it was a Houdini clock. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a huge fan of Houdini, and I've always been since I've been a little kid. And, uh, you know, it's just for me to, you know, I've always followed Houdini and just been a part of it. And I did a straight jacket routine and a lot of shows and, and stuff like that. I used to love reading about Houdini, how he would go to some uh, some of these events or things going up by uh, seances, and he'd call them out. Oh no, the bell's over there. Oh, the chair's on a wire. Oh, he'd call people out on, he would. on, he their, would be on their BS. He was skeptic, and he would call out different people and stuff like that. To, and because his stuff was and, awesome. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Different scapes he would do, and the you know crowds over audience and stuff, and. You know, he was the father of stuff. He started a lot of magic and, you know, started for all of us, and which is, which is cool. That's cool. That's cool. Where do you see Michael in two years, five years? Uh, well, I'll keep performing with Masters of Illusion. You know what I mean? It's been great to tour with them. We, we, we do a live tour every year throughout the year, different times, and then we're sometimes in a residency throughout the year. Who knows? We'll see what happens, you know, these days with what's going on. Uh, it's, we're in an industry that's going to be a little tough to come back from this, you know, being so close together. So um, for me, it's just, I just want to perform, you know, whether it's on stage or whether it's via Zoom, who knows, we'll see. But, I, you know, I think that the, the, the part of performing on stage in front of a large audience is, is what it's all about. And, you know, for me, I love that. And I love being able to see the audience's reaction, meet them, talk to them, and engage with them. Right. One last question. Two more questions. We're out. Sure. There's a show that shows like the reveal, it reveals all the magic crew, the guy with the mask. What's your thoughts on that show? <laughs> well, it was a crazy show that was on years ago. And, uh, you know, everyone, all magicians were kind of upset about it. And we should be, and I was, of course, but it gave some of us a, a, an idea of oh, how can we come up with other things? You know what I mean? How can we take something that he revealed and revert it into a way that we were tricking the audience as well? And a lot of us did that. You know, I did that in the time when it was out. I remember doing a trick that he revealed and then turned it around into something different. So gave us a, 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 a maybe a little avenue to kind of create some new things and, and try other new stuff. But I wasn't a fan of it. I don't think it should be given away. Really. Okay, okay. And, uh, well, I think that you answered everything perfectly. You passed the test. <laughs> passed the test. <laughs> uh, you're supposed to give me one magic trick. You're going to give me a little trick on camera? Uh, Not supposed to, but... Do you have a deck of cards or no? Oh, I don't have a deck of cards. You don't. Um, okay, well, I'll show, you know what? I'll show you a little um, illusion here, okay? I have this white board, okay? I want you to check this out. I have one dot on this side. I'm going to teach you a little magic, okay? Okay. This side, I have four dots. This side, now I have three dots. And this side, now I have six. Did you get it? Got it. Not that hard, right? How many do I have over here? One. Well, you, you want me to say two because one's hidden? Well, of course, right? I got two over okay, here. Okay. If I put my hand here, there's one here. And how right. many is here? Okay. Looks like, two. I, have, looks like I have three. Looks like right? you have three, right? Yeah, it's an illusion. That's what magic's all about. Sometimes it's an illusion. And this side... But I know right now you're going to flip it on me. Right now you're going to make this... <laughs> how many do I have over here now? Four? Five. Five, correct. So I put okay. my hand here. It looks like I have six. Correct. Correct. And then the other side, see, I have four, I have five. The other side, I still have three, right? Yeah. No. Yes. Should have two so plus three. The one. Two. Yeah. How many do I? How many do you think I have? Three. No, two. Oh. two technically two. Oh, you're right. Three now. I do have three. You're right. You're right. And this side, I have how many? Six. You are right. You're catching on here. So six on this side. And what do you think I have on the other side? Nothing. No, I still have three. That would be okay. more than that. 
And what about the other side? I'll do one more for you. Two. I mean, no, there's eight. Wow. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that's a little illusion for you. <laughs> that's, that, that's always like the audience. Like, it's over there. It's over here at eight, two, over there. Four. You got us. And that's what it's all about. It's about quick, just getting the audience, rea you know, their reaction, and making sure they're having fun and stuff like that. And that's what it's all about, especially in these times as well. So. Good show. Good show, Michael. Next time I'm in Atlantic City, I'm going to come check you out. and Definitely. You're out in L.A. area? I'm in L.A., yeah. Cool. I'm in New Jersey right now. so. But I'll be out there, and I'll come check out your show. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thanks for having me on and stuff. Cool. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show this Friday. It's a, it's a cool episode.